So we are beginning our geometry unit and finishing our review on statistics. I will give you your tracking sheet on Friday. I'm sorry, on Monday. Um, but I want you to understand where this lesson is coming from. This is a copy of the tracking sheet. You can see that we are starting geometry here. And uh, the first lesson of it, we're, we're intending to finish up by the end of the month. The first part of it is uh, formulating thoughts about area. The assignment is a statistics review with metaphorical expressions. And we are looking at um, box plots and histograms are like the area of polygons. I'm going to change this statement just a little bit. And it's going to say box plots and histograms are, oh, what does that say? Is that two Bs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, box plots and histograms are like area of polygons. And the specific polygons are um, rectangles. And it may be squares and rectangles. All right, so the outcomes for today are, of course, I can find measures of the centers and measures of variability, but we're going to bridge that with, I can explain how to find the area of a shape without the formula. But, uh, uh, but of course, because you all are uh, enhanced events. We're going to also use the formula from last year, and we're going to describe the area of geometric figures related to each other. And those figures are the uh, rectangle and the triangle. So keep those in mind. All right. Using the paper from yesterday and the graph paper that you have today, go ahead and put your name at the top. And across the top, I want you to write that statement that I just said. Box plots and histograms. Go ahead. Are like the area of polygons and we'll just say squares and rectangles because we don't know which ones we're going to end up with just yet all right so yesterday we uh found the temperatures of 12 locations across the u.s what were the range of those temperatures? Go ahead, tell me. Did anybody have anything higher than 59? Um, I got, um, I got Texas with 60 here. Was what? Texas with 60. 60? Did anybody get anything higher than 60? You have my... Thomas, what did you get? You got a high 64. Was that your uh was that the average or was that the current temperature? It sounds like that was the gonna be the average for the day. What was the lowest temperature you all got? Um, all right. So did you say your high was 61? No, no, no. Our low was, my low was 33, and then the low was 31. Yeah. What was the high? Uh, the highest temperature? 52. My high is 60. Okay. So we're going to say that our temperatures range from 30 to 60. All right. The first thing that we're going to do is create a histogram on our graph paper. So in order for this histogram to pan out correctly. I want you to keep in mind that each 
bar of the histogram will be four units wide, okay? So we're gonna take up about this much space on the graph paper. And we need about seven units tall. So start about here and count seven down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I want you to count because we need about four units for each, for each bar. We're gonna count 12 over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we're setting up for our histogram. The first segment of the histogram is going to range. Now, for those of you who have some that are in the 60s, you're going to need an extra segment. So add four more bars on the end. The first segment will contain four bars. So one, two, three, four, about here. And that is going to be from 30 to 39. The next set, one, two, three, four, will range from 40 to 49. Fifty to fifty nine, and if you have data that is above that, then go ahead and add sixty to sixty nine. If you don't have data above that, then you can stop. Go ahead and label that these are temperature in degree Fahrenheit. Oh, that was so serious. Oh, this is so hot. Actually, then you're gonna label the sides. And this is the number of locations. Now, we're going to continue and we're going to plot the histogram using the data that you have. So for me, I had three cities that were with temperatures in the 30s. So I'm going to draw a box like so. Welcome then I had six that were in the 40s. And three that were in the 50s. Above each of these, we're going to put how many times each interval occurred. <laughs> On the side, we're going to list what the mean, the median, 
and the modes were for the data on yesterday. If you had two modes, list them both. Um, in my data, Colorado and Iowa both were at 44 degrees and California and Georgia were both at 47 degrees. Okay, what do you notice about the data? What do you notice about your data? It's different, like every multiple different data. What do you notice about my data? Data was different well, yeah. Anybody else? It looks symmetrical. Okay, my data looks mm -hmm. symmetrical. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Also, my data has almost the same mean and median. What about yours? Just like 20 of us. You, mine, mine does. Anybody else have the same mean and median almost? Okay. Even if the mean is one degree off, we can say that the mean is approximately equal to the median. Therefore, the data is symmetrical and evenly distributed. That is that is symmetrical. The only reason it's a little off you said nine. You said what? Um, my 30, 30 is nine. My 40, 44 is 10. My 15, 59 is four. My 66 is No, just four. give me the values in order. Nine, 10, four, one. We didn't have that many cities. We only had 12 cities. We're moving on to the uh, polygon part. We're going to find the area of each one of these boxes. How do you find the area of a rectangle or a square? I'm listening. Uh, mouth. Sorry. Um, you take the I was just, you take the the length and the width. And you, um, All right, length times width. So I want you to find the area of each one of these and write them inside the boxes. What's another way we can find it if we don't know the formula? Um, we, uh, so we actually, actually, we always have the same thing. Um, it's like the same All right. Find the area of each one and write them inside. It's going to be different for yours because you may have different values. Any questions on that part? Long Beach and California are totally two different states. One is not inside the oven. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to the box plot. Was everyone able to find the area? Yes. It is the length oh, times the width. We're bridging the statistics to the geometry. 
Now, moving on to the box plot. Down at the bottom. Down at the bottom, we are going to uh, draw a number line first. If you start at the very first clear line that you can see with the number 30, because I believe that's the lowest temperature, and you just want to write the numbers, 30, 31, 32, like this is 30, this is 31, 32, 33, Go ahead and start writing just the numbers. You can make it all the way to 63 degrees. Number from left to right, each unit square. Now, okay, so now we're going to create the uh, box plot above this number line but before we do that i want you to actually draw the number line so using the straight edge draw your number line above here if you drew it on it that's fine this will help us see the shape of the box plot and it helps us see the shape of the data. The first thing that we're going to plot are Q1 and 4. Those are the endpoints. So plot your lowest number. Now, go just above so that you'll have space to put a wide box. So I'm going to go probably about here and see how far up I am and I'm gonna put a dot for my lowest point and then I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna put a dot for my highest point remember this is the data that we collected yesterday Now, we are looking at finding the median. And when we draw our Q1, our Q2, 3, and 4, we want to make the boxes about four units tall. Now, take a look for a second. Here's my data. I made a mistake yesterday. Well, but I also did something helpful. I knew that there were 12 data points. And so the first thing I did was list the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then after I looked at my list and I started listing the values in order from least to greatest above 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and checking them off to make sure that I included all of the numbers. So my median came out to be nice and even between 44 and 44. So we're gonna plot 44. I'm gonna plot 44 for my median. Your median may be something different, but go ahead and plot your median. Here's my uh, Q1, my, I'm sorry, my lower and my upper extremes. I am going to plot my median and I'm going to make it at least four units tall. So I'm going to go up to, I put it on the wrong place. I'm going to go up to and down to because I want it to be wide.
Now, going back to my data, because I need to find Q1 and Q3, another mistake I made, well, here's the mistake that I made. When you have two numbers that share the middle, you're supposed to split the data in half to find Q1 and Q3. I forgot to do that. So my Q1 is not 36. My Q1 is actually 38. Make sure you do not make that mistake. So that's going to change my IQR. My Q1 is 36, 38. You see I had 36 right here? That's wrong. Make sure you did not make that mistake. When two numbers share the middle, you have to split it and then find your Q1. Don't exclude the middle from finding your Q1 and your Q3. So I'm going to plot 38 for my Q1. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to look at the upper half and my Q3 is between 47 and 50. 47, 48, 49, 50. So 47, 48 is between 47 and 48, which means 47.5. That doesn't sound right. 47, 48, 48.5. So I'm going to put Q3, my Q3 at 48.5. You do have to subtract to find IQR. IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So my Q3 is going to be between 48 and 49. Are you all with me? It's going to be 42. If that's the, the average of those two numbers. Okay, so now we are going to connect these boxes. to form our box plot. And then we're going to connect the ends Stop. Now my data doesn't look exactly symmetrical. I wonder why. It is not exactly symmetrical. I guess that's why it was off by one degree. Please go ahead and label the values of each quarter. So what value is your lower? Okay. 
what value is Q1? Once we've labeled the values, we're going to list what the range and the IQRs are. Remember that your range is your highest value minus your lowest value. Mine turned out to be really easy numbers to compute. <laughs> Now, allow me to interpret this data for you based upon this IQR. My IQR is 10 degrees. That means that the middle 50% of the data only has the difference of 10 degrees. Please find the area of each one of these boxes. Keep in mind that one of your boxes may have two halves in them if you have a 0.5. Go ahead and do that now. Find the area of each one of these boxes. Find the area of this, find the area of each box. Length times width. So like my box right here is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is 24 units squared. This one is gonna be a little different. It's a four by four is 16. But then I also have these two units on the side that I had. I have four units that I has. So that's really 18 units squared. Because that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's 16. But then I have these two that make a hole. And then I have these two that make a hole. So look, even by judging by the area of the boxes, my data is not 100% symmetrical. It's almost symmetrical and it's almost centered, but it's not quite centered. What's the area of your boxes? Do they say that your data is centered? They're a little off, huh? Questions? All right, now for the last part, somewhere on the front of your paper, wherever you have room, you are going to draw either a square or a rectangle. Whatever size you can accommodate. Whatever size you can accommodate, as neat as possible. You are going to find the area of that square or rectangle. 
by multiplying the length By width. Once you've done that, you are going to diag diagonally split that rectangle or that square with your straight edge. And you're going to find the area of the triangle by dividing that area in half. Okay, I get that. Uh oh, that's 55 divided by 2. And that is how box plots and histograms are like the area of squares and rectangles. If I was a square and like did this, is how you do it? 